just saw a 10 second diesel truck. Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the garage. Hope everybody's having a good weekend. So I just got done mowing the grass. Which, as you can see, is finally manicured. So anyhow, I got done mowing the lawn, and I got looking at the truck. So sitting over there in the shade, just kind of looking over everything, and got thinking, you know, how much stuff has changed. I was looking at the back end of Veronica and the front end of Caitlin at that point, and I was just thinking about how these trucks are 11 years apart. Um, basically... Decade of difference in the trucks. Yes, uh, Veronica is an 01 gas truck, but for our purposes, we're going to be talking about her as if she was a diesel. But I was just thinking about what what's changed, you know, the advancements in technology that these pickup trucks have seen. And it it really, it's, it's amazing, um, the, the vast improvements that have been made. But are they improvements? So that's the question. Has technology ruined the pickup truck? So, obviously, technology, we're talking about the fourth gen, um, Caitlin. Now, Caitlin is kind of a bad example of this because she's a 12, so it's like the first or second year of traction control. It is the last year of, like, the older model radios. They're not, um, you know, they're Bluetooth and they're touchscreen, but they're still, like, uh, like you'd have in a third gen truck, just touch screen rather than a button. So she's not the best example of the new technology, but she'll do for, uh, what we're talking about. So the simple things technology wise that Caitlin has that like an O1 one truck would not for starters, you know, the truck truck has 120 volt outlet, which is fucking awesome. But like I said, we have a radio here that is touch screen. But it's not the best. It's, let me start her up here. Like I said, the radio, if you look at this, this is the older, um, I can't remember if they call it my touch or whatever it is, uh, radio. After you got, you know, the next year, 2013 and newer, things just were vastly improved. Uh, Tradesman truck even has a better radio than this Laramie truck. A uh, friend of mine has a 2017 Tradesman, which, you know, is pretty well optioned for a Tradesman. But even factory, his radio is far superior to this one. Um, it has Bluetooth connectivity, but it's just not the best and all that. So that is definitely a big improvement. You know, the radio to the one in the blue truck. The next thing is this center stack on the dash, if you will. Uh, which if truck's not running, so it's not on anyhow, but you have a bunch of gauges you can scroll through on here and check out. Um, once again, this being a 12, it is not as advanced as the 2013 up models, which you can have, you have a lot more gauges there. Um, I think the newer trucks, even this is like a digital dash. I can't even remember, but that's something else that you know, it was just a big technology improvement, the, the amount of um, features you can check out, I guess. And another thing, this is kind of technology related, is this truck has heated and cooled seats and a heated steering wheel and also like a digital thermostat, which these trucks didn't have. But I think a lot of vehicles back then were starting to get into that. And also the cooled seats and the heated steering wheel, they just weren't a thing. Now, that being said, we also have an exhaust brake, which is a plus when you don't have a second-gen swap truck. But we have traction control. Um, traction control sucks because it's traction control and stability control. So if I turn this off on Caitlin here, I can still do a burnout and all that, but I can't get her all tossed up and squirrely because then the st stability control will kick in, and that just blows. This... No such thing. With that all being said, the inside of the second gen truck, as you can see, the radio, it is a throwback. I mean, it's still got a cassette player. Oh, one, you know, cassettes were about done, but still had a cassette player. Hell, I, I don't even know if new trucks you can get a CD player. I know like a Durango and stuff, it's an option. I mean, that's just how far shit's gone. CDs are now obsolete, which was the new technology back for this radio. But like I said, Talking technology, look at this dash. It's just basic. You know, you have the these gauges, but those that's it. 
that's all you can check out is your water temperature, your voltage, your fuel, RPM, mile an hour, and oil pressure. But that's it. You, there's no other touch screens. There's no other, well, not that that has a touch screen in the dash, but there's no other screens to scroll through for information. It's just basic. This truck just switches like you would expect for you know your thermostat controls for the HVAC system nothing digital no driver side and passenger side it's just very simple you know all this stuff's easy to work on it's easy to diagnose um, it's just great no such thing as traction control in this truck which is a plus to me um, that shit's just a pain in the ass talking about the technology on the interior of the trucks obviously with like the fourth gen trucks, the newer stuff, you have a lot more options. You have a lot more um, things you can check out on the truck and display and you know monitor from the factory, which is awesome. Yes, this truck is old school. It's easy to fix. And the fourth gen, bit of a pain in the ass. I currently, as you guys know, have an issue with it telling me I lost the trailer when there's nothing hooked up to it. And I just can't figure it out. Um, you don't have those kind of issues on something like a second gen truck so yes you got a lot of options but the headaches could also be a little bit worse too so that's kind of the interior part of it now the more important thing and we're going to be talking about veronica once again like she is a diesel the engines so we have a you know would be a 6.7 cummins in the fourth gen and this body style truck would have a 5.9 vp44 uh commons so you know what what's the difference what's better you know what's worse well the vp44 trucks um were definitely limited on power um, a lot harder to make power with those trucks you could get a chip or a you know tuner and put on there but it was always just box programming there's no such thing as custom tuning now you have the common rail 6.7 which with the advert or advent of common rail diesel technology, you have a CP3 pump putting, you know, to a uh, putting pressure to a fuel rail with injector lines going to each individual injector, which is controlled by like a solenoid or whatever. Um, honestly, with the VP44 trucks, I think it's all done by the injection pump, but I might be wrong about that. Never actually had a VP44 truck. Um, anyhow, so onto the common rail stuff. That made us able to custom tune these trucks, which to me is so superior than anything box tuning you can get. Pure and simple, uh, custom tuning is the shit. Uh, you change the turbo, you change the injectors, whatever. You're not just changing the timing. You're not just increasing the fuel pressure. You're actually you know, setting that thing up for that modification you've done which is awesome you can just fine tune everything make it perfect make it so it's not just huff and smoke all the time which you know a lot of the kids like but it's just stupid there's no need to be you know spraying black smoke all over the place yes does it look cool it does but still on public roads and stuff with how shit it is anymore just not worth doing so custom tuning definitely helps you avoid doing that and being that you know that dick blacking out the highway common rail custom tuning box tuning non-common rail vp44 uh even the 12 valve trucks mechanical engines are cool but the the adjustability that you can do with this just with a laptop at 10 minutes is awesome even with a 12 valve you have to do everything mechanically it's a pain in the ass um, if you watch guys with really hopped up 12 valves they can be a pain to start sometimes you know using ether and all that kind of stuff the common rail trucks not so much these things are great starters uh you just have everything tuned in and it's good to go and yeah they're just great and that's all i have to say about that that's all i have to say about that that's a little bit of a synopsis of kind of what's changed on these trucks in like a decade um i didn't say anything about moby dick which moby dick is a gas truck as well but you know nobody really cares well i didn't really say anything about moby dick moby dick's like would be like the in between look at these fucking chipmunks sons of bitches look at them
Well, we just had a little encounter with uh, Chip and Dale. These two gum shoes are picking up the slack. There's no case to big, no case to small. When you need help, just call Chip, 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 Chip and Dale's Rescue Ranger. Chip, Chip, Chip and Dale's. So, has technology ruined the pickup truck? My opinion is no. Um, it has made the pickup truck even better as it has with all cars. Yes, there are certain caveats to that of things that suck like traction control. Um, oh, another thing I forgot. This truck will tell you, in factory form at least, what your air pressure is in your tires. Like, well, every other car that's made nowadays. No such thing on the blue truck. That's kind of cool, you know? You don't even have to, you know, you can kind of be a lazier owner. You don't need to do the maintenance. It'll tell you, you need an oil change rather than like here. It doesn't tell you nothing. So you could run it for 30,000 miles. It's never gonna say change the oil. It, it'll just let you blow it up. But, and I guess that's the other part of it with all this technology on the trucks and the cars nowadays. People have less of a clue than ever about what's going on with their vehicle. Uh, you know, they, fill up the tire because it says you got low pressure they change the oil when it's told to be changed i mean there's no thinking about it. like hey every five thousand or three thousand miles i gotta change the oil on this thing nope not anymore they wait till the idiot light comes on and then they take it to wherever the hell they take it the dealership or what so that was a little rant there but anyway technology has just made life so much better with the pickup truck i just put this entire video together talking about technology and diesel pickups and i forgot 100 percent forgot about emissions they suck so i can't believe i completely forgot about emissions um i was putting this video together and i completely forgot about the fact that this truck has emissions none of these had anything even more than a catalytic converter they didn't have a DPF, they didn't have a DEF, they didn't have an EGR, nothing. Um, and while emissions do suck, it is an eventuality of our society. The way people have gotten, you know, tree, tree hugger wise, it's just something that was going to happen. Now, I think it was taken to a far greater extent than it should have. And like we spoke of earlier, are you know, kids throwing black smoke out on the roads part of that? Probably. That probably swayed public opinion a bit, I imagine. But they're easy enough to delete. And here in Pennsylvania, we don't have emissions on our trucks. We just have a safety inspection. So for a diesel, it's not that big a deal. But that always brings up the reality of like a resale value. Um, none of us probably care that Caitlin is deleted. But if I went to a dealership, I probably would get not much for the truck or nothing at all. They might not even take it depending on the dealership because of the lack of emissions. Even though up in the shed, I have... The emission stuff with 8,000 miles on it. It's practically brand new. But anyhow, I forgot to mention that in the video. Emissions suck. But it's like a causality. It's a thing that was eventually going to happen anyway. Good thing is, we can get rid of that shit. They've actually become almost like a luxury vehicle anymore. And sure, price tag wise, uh, they absolutely are in that range but yeah the things we take for granted on these new trucks we never even had the option for them in these old trucks so yeah i'm a big fan of technology good deal guys i know i was just kind of ranting and raving there but uh it's hot out i just got the grass cut and i really don't feel like working on nothing right now so i figured we'd just talk a little bit about my trucks Hope you guys enjoyed. And Veronica does need a video of our own. And we will eventually start doing stuff to her once we get the race truck back together. But she will get her own introduction video after we spruce her up a little bit. Um, the wheels and tires that are on Moby Dick actually belong on Veronica. I put those on Moby Dick to get it inspected the other year. They need to get back on here. We need to get her fixed up, as you can see from previous problems. We have a grill that needs fixed. 
we have some god-awful rust issues this fender is just getting terrible quick and look at this god damn ah <sighs> it's just a shame i hate rust that's something they should do technology's great make these motherfuckers rust proof would you as manufacturers so anyway i hope you guys liked the video subscribe to the channel catch you guys in the next one get out in your garage get the wrenching on your truck